religious matters, as does the general public. And uh, I could give you many examples of this, but I'll just restrict myself to a two. Not two, but a few. Uh, Charles Towns, uh, professor of physics at Berkeley. Charlie Towns and I were classmates. Well, we were classmates. Charlie's a bit older than I. We were faculty colleagues at Berkeley the entire 18 years that I was a professor of chemistry at Berkeley. Uh, Towns was uh, the most distinguished member of the faculty because he did something rather important. Discovered the laser, which led very quickly to the laser. Received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1964 and almost the second Nobel Prize for his observation of interstellar molecules, a uh, topic dear to my heart. And uh, he's written his autobiography. Uh, it's called Making Waves. All of you will understand that because lasers are a wave-like phenomenon. And uh, there's a chapter in there that I encourage you to, actually the whole book is good, but I encourage you to read uh, the last chapter, which he calls Spiritual Views from a Scientific Base. And Tim says this, In my view, the question of origin seems always left unanswered if we explore from a scientific view alone. Thus, I believe there's a need for some religious or metaphysical explanation. I believe in the concept of God and in his uh, existence. Arthur Schaller, one of my teachers at Stanford University, Nobel Prize in Physics in 1981 for laser spectroscopy, made this statement to, in the Alan Lightman book. He said, we're fortunate to have the Bible, and especially the New Testament, which tells us so much about God in widely accessible human terms. Uh, John Barrow is now a professor of physics at Cambridge University. He's one of the two professors of theoretical physics at Cambridge. Cambridge is still a very hierarchical institution in terms of its uh, descriptions of faculty members. Now, Barrow, I've known for a long time, Barrow was a, uh, a young uh, lecturer and senior lecturer at the University of Sussex in England, uh, 30 years ago, and he used to love to come to Berkeley on sabbatical. And uh, he met with a, uh, a group of a dozen like-minded souls uh, in my office quite uh, frequently. He's, he's, he's a very quiet guy. I didn't know he was going to become uh, he was going to become famous. Uh, this began with his book, The Anthropic Cosmological Principle. It, uh, it continued with his receipt of the Templeton Prize uh, two years ago, 1.5 million U.S. is pretty good. Uh, his, uh, his conclusion about all these things is, I certainly don't believe there's some fundamental difference or conflict between a Christian perspective on the world and the practice of science. That was getting near the end. Okay, John Polkinghorne, uh, formerly holder of the chair that, uh, that uh, Beryl now holds at later president of Queens College in Cambridge. Queens College is one of these pretty uh, colleges in Cambridge on the Kings Parade. It's right next to St. Catherine's College, where I always stay in Cambridge, because my close friend Nicholas Handy is, uh, is a fellow of, of uh, St. Catherine's College. Uh, John Polkinghorne, uh, distinguished, highly distinguished uh, particle physicist. His statement, I take God very seriously indeed. I'm a Christian believer and believe that God exists and has made himself known in human terms in Jesus Christ. Now, we've been talking mostly about theoretical scientists here, and uh, that may reflect my own bias. I am a theoretical chemical physicist, so this is what I know uh, best. But obviously, experiments are really the heart of, of science, and the greatest living observational uh, cosmologist is Alan Sandage. Alan Sandage works at the uh, Carnegie Observatory right next to Caltech, the California Institute of Technology. And uh, New York Times refers to him as the grand old man of cosmology, the, the, uh, the successor to Edwin Hubble, on and on and on, winner of all manner of prizes. And he was asked in the Alan Lightman book, which I referred to, he was asked a common question can a person be a scientist and also be a Christian? He said, uh, yes, that Stephen Hawking is. A, British, and B, works on quantum gravity. So this is kind of an indirect way of saying at least Paul Davies thinks Eichmann is even better than Stephen Hawking. It's not a debate we need to enter. Um, so Eichmann uh, sponsored this lecture, and 
I asked him to give me something too, and, and uh, he gave me this. He said, uh, Chris Isham, God of Christianity is not only the ground of being, he is also incarnate. Essential therein is the vision of the resurrection of Jesus Christ as the new creation out of the old order and the profound notion of the redemption of time through the life and death of Jesus Christ. Now, the last sentence, I ask you to be cautious in interpreting it uh, because it may not be what you said. His last sentence is this. I think it will be rather a long time before theoretical physics has it been useful to add to that. Uh, some have interpreted that statement as uh, I am saying he didn't think theoretical physics was very important. He, would, that would be completely off the mark. Uh, I know Chris Eichmann, he is passionate about theoretical physics. He has committed his entire professional life to theoretical physics. He's just saying that what he's found in Christ is more profound yet. So, my closing statement, here it goes. The Big Bang represents an immensely powerful, yet carefully planned and controlled release of matter, energy, space, and time. All of this is accomplished within the strict confines of very carefully fine-tuned physical constants and laws. The power and care this explosion reveals exceed human mental capacity by multiple orders of magnitude. Thank you very much.